Hi, my name is Matt Hancher, and I'm an engineering manager here at Google. I work with a lot of the teams that build the products that you'll be hearing about over the course of today. If you had a chance to tune in for the opening remarks, then you got to hear about some of the amazing ways in which people all around the world are using these mapping products to address social and environmental problems uh, in their areas. Today, you're gonna to hear from the teams that build those products about some of the latest features that you can get started immediately applying to your problems. Uh, but I know many of you may not be familiar with everything that Google has to offer in this area. So to kick things off, I'm gonna take you on a quick tour through our mapping related products that you can use, give you a feel for what you might wanna use them for, a bit about what you'll learn about over the course of today. And that way, if you only have a limited amount of time, you can decide where you really want to focus your attention to help supercharge your work. So the first project you're going to hear about today is Plus Codes, which is a simple but profound idea that assigns a unique digital address to every point on the Earth's surface. We created Plus Codes uh, to respond to the fact that billions of people around the world live in places where the street addresses that you and I are, are probably accustomed to taking for granted just don't exist. If you don't have a street address, it makes it much harder to do basic things like get a government ID card or a bank account or just to order something online for delivery. So with plus codes, just a few letters and numbers will uniquely identify any point on the Earth's surface. You can get started using these uh, codes in Google Maps and Earth and other products today. Uh, and we've also been working uh, with partners around the world to scale up assigning official codes to homes, working with the banking systems or postal systems to recognize them, uh, and more. And you can use plus codes in your own projects to identify anything in the real world. Uh, for example, let's say that you're keeping track of a system of um, freshwater wells or trees in the urban forest. Uh, if you use plus codes as the identifiers for those objects, then you never have to worry about keeping track of where they are because the location is just built right into the identifier. So like I said, this is a really simple but powerful uh, technology, and I'm sure you'll think of all kinds of creative uh, ways to use plus codes in your work. Next, you're going to hear about uh, a project called Environmental Insights. Uh, which we're really excited about. We've been working on for the last couple of years to help cities uh, take climate action and reduce their carbon footprints using actionable data. Uh, so we started out in just five cities a couple of years ago as a pilot project. And since then, we've been scaling up to hundreds of cities all over the world. Uh, and we've been seeing a groundswell of interest from cities in taking this kind of action. But this is an example of an area where it's just hard to even know where to get started without good data. So that's where environmental insights comes in. Uh, we're combining a mix of public data, proprietary Google data, and powerful techniques like machine learning to help cities understand several different aspects of their carbon footprint, like the emissions from their transportation grid, building emissions, the solar power potential of all their homes or rooftops, and things like the uh, public health impacts of air pollution that impact citizens directly every day. Now, uh, we've got a uh, ambitious goal of helping cities around the world uh, reduce carbon emissions in total by a gigaton annually by 2030. Today, we've got well over 100 cities uh, uh, with data available on our public website, but we're working with many more cities around the world. So if you are a, a civic leader, a government employee, a, a consultant, and you don't see your cities included on the website yet, you're gonna learn today how you can uh, get in touch with us to get started. After that, you're going to learn the latest news about the product that really got us started off in this area about 15 years ago, which is Google Earth. As you probably know, Google Earth gives you access to Google's unprecedented database of high resolution satellite and aerial imagery, uh, 3D terrain data, uh, street view imagery, uh, and much more. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. So we've heard from many of our users about how having access not just to a picture, but to the ability to fly around an area, maybe that you're uh, planning uh, for your next field campaign or see how an area has changed over time if you're studying some human or man-made phenomenon uh, is just invaluable. Uh, Google Earth exists in four flavors uh, on the web, on Android and iOS mobile devices and on the desktop. So you can access this rich resource wherever you are. And it's not just about the imagery. We've been working with partners at places like the uh, National Geographic, NASA, 
PBS, the BBC, and many more to bring rich educational content into Google Earth as well. Uh, teachers around the world have been using Google Earth to help their students learn about places and people all over the planet. Uh, and of course, during this pandemic, uh, many uh, parents have found Google to be an incredibly valuable educational tool at home as well. Now, one of the really exciting things that you'll learn about today is how you can use the new content creation features in Google Earth to uh, gather your own information and tell your own stories on top of this amazing canvas. Uh, Many of you may already be familiar with MyMaps, which is our lightweight mapping tool that is also a great option if you just want a quick and easy way to put a lightweight and embeddable map online. Uh, but with Google Earth, you can go far beyond that to uh, include uh, rich imagery and video against that, that canvas uh, that Google Earth makes available to you. Uh, one of the examples of this that I saw recently that really resonated with me tells the story of the Mississippi River. Uh, as it flows from where it starts in Minnesota, where I grew up, uh, down across the continent, uh, having different impacts on different communities uh, on the way to the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, so these are the kinds of stories that you can tell. Uh, you can gather information collaboratively with your colleagues and coworkers. You can publish this out to the world. Uh, so you'll learn about that today, and you'll learn about some of the more advanced features that, for example, if you know a little bit of HTML, you can use to create really rich, interactive, customized experiences inside your Google Earth projects. Uh, so I can't see, I can't wait to see what you all do with it. Now, most of you are probably at least somewhat familiar with Google Earth already, but I'm betting that some of you won't have heard of its younger sibling, Google Earth Studio. Uh, now, this has been around for just a few years, and it brings together the power of that rich imagery database uh, into a professional uh, video and animation production environment. Uh, we uh, originally created this as a tool uh, for professional video production in the newsroom setting, where you can use uh, Earth Studio to create animations that fly in precise and controlled ways uh, through the world, and then bring the results of that into your 2D or 3D video production workflow. Uh, you've probably seen examples of this uh, in uh, many stories that you've seen in TV on topics from the Olympics to uh, political exposés to natural disasters, you name it. Uh, and even though we created this originally for video professionals, it's actually a wonderful way to get started, even if you've never worked with video before, because you can tap into this really engaging uh, uh, collection of content. So I hope you'll check it out. Finally, you're going to hear a lot today about Earth Engine, which is our cloud computing platform for geospatial data processing. Uh, I myself came to Google in 2009 to help co-found the team that would become the Earth Engine team. And we're coming up on our 10th birthday uh, right now, and I'm just incredibly excited about everything the team and our users have accomplished in that time. Uh, we originally started working on Earth Engine with an eye on forestry, uh, building it uh, to support creating the first global map of high resolution forest loss over time, uh, and then uh, extending it to support the first high resolution alerting systems for deforestation across the Pantropics. Uh, but even as we were focusing on forestry in the early days, we knew that the tools that we were building uh, could be useful for much, much more. And in the years since then, we've expanded the scope of the platform uh, and reached many thousands of scientists, researchers, decision makers uh, who are using these tools uh, to conduct research and drive decisions in a range of fields, publishing uh, thousands of papers in virtually every domain of earth science. Now, uh, if you're new to Earth Engine, as I mentioned, this is a specialized cloud computing tool. Uh, it brings together a rich catalog of uh, public data, like satellite data, uh, and combines it with tools for slicing and dicing that data, uh, computing statistics, training and applying machine learning models, producing custom visualizations, and packaging all that up as applications. Uh, it's quite powerful. Uh, you can access all those capabilities from JavaScript and Python programming environments. Uh, and uh, you can know then that behind the scenes, uh, Google is bringing the full power of our parallel computing uh, abilities to help you scale your analyses up from the local to the national to the global scale. Now, the cornerstone of Earth Engine and all that you can do with it is the data catalog. Uh, we have been uh, growing this data catalog, which now includes 700 feeds of data from a variety of sources, uh, government uh, uh, space programs, uh, academic research programs, and much more. It's growing fast at a rate of about a petabyte of new data 
a, a month that we put at your fingertips for you to use in your analyses. The most popular uh, data sets in the catalog are famous ones that you may have heard of, like uh, the Landsat, Sentinel-1, and Sentinel-2 programs that together provide a 40-year record of the history of the Earth's surface and uh, bring in new, both radar and optical data of the surface of the entire Earth about once a week. Incredibly powerful. Uh, we've been adding more recently a variety of uh, types of data like weather and climate. And uh, we're right now particularly excited about the new geostationary satellite imagery that we have, which is what powers our ability, for example, to monitor the wildfires that have been happening all over the Western United States in recent weeks and provide information about uh, the affected areas in real time to Google Maps users. So you'll hear a bit about that specific application today as well. Now, Earth Engine is a powerful tool all by itself, but it's particularly powerful when used together with other tools in the Google Cloud platform. And we've been working hard over the last couple of years to create uh, more ways for you to use Earth Engine together with those other tools. Uh, so today you'll have a chance to hear about a few of those, including, for example, uh, new APIs that make it easier for you to integrate Earth Engine into your custom cloud platform application. Uh, this includes, for example, APIs if you are uh, running some analysis that just doesn't fit well, you can't run that analysis in Earth Engine, that's no problem. You can use these APIs to fetch data from the Earth Engine data catalog and use Earth Engine as essentially your uh, custom uh, uh, on the fly data cube in the cloud. Uh, you'll also hear about technologies that let you use Earth Engine to analyze data that you have in cloud storage, for example, in the popular cloud optimized GeoTIFF file format. And this is a great option uh, for folks who are trying to build hybrid systems that combine the best of conventional file-based image processing with the power of Earth Engine. It's quite powerful for those of you who may be working with large amounts of commercial satellite imagery. Uh, so you'll hear some more about that today. And the area in which we've been investing the most at this uh, combination of cloud and Earth Engine is in the area of machine learning. So uh, the cloud machine learning uh, and uh, AI platform is designed to help you uh, scale uh, your training and your inference tasks. Uh, and with Earth Engine, you can now apply those tools easily to Earth science at scale. Uh, so you're going to hear about those underlying technologies today, uh, but you're also going to hear about one particular project uh, that we're very excited about called Dynamic World. Uh, this has been a collaboration between Google, uh, the National Geographic, uh, and the World Resources Institute, uh, focused on the problem of global high-resolution land cover mapping and modeling. Uh, the early results of this work have been rolling out one country at a time in recent weeks, uh, and I've just been incredibly excited to see how the rich detail uh, that comes out of these multi-class probability models uh, captures so much of what's happening in the landscape. Uh, I just get lost uh, panning and zooming around these maps. Uh, so you'll hear more about uh, this collaboration today, about why we've been focusing on land cover mapping, uh, about how we've approached this problem uh, from a scientific partnerships perspective, uh, and about how you can use those same tools to power your own problems uh, using Earth Engine and Cloud AI platform. So I've talked a lot about some of the power tools that are available in Earth Engine, uh, and uh, they're really amazing, but not everyone can write code. And even for those of us who can write code, uh, it can be a pain sometimes to have to go modify a script every time we want to run some uh, new analysis or a variation on a theme. So that's why we created Earth Engine Apps, which is a, a tool that allows you to take any Earth Engine analysis and package it up in a custom graphical user interface very easily. Uh, so you can then uh, create these apps and share them with your colleagues uh, who may not be familiar with running scripts themselves, uh, you can publish them on the web to make uh, your data or some analysis uh, accessible to everyone. Uh, or you can just use it yourself to automate uh, common routine tasks uh, in your own data science workflows. Uh, for example, inside Google Maps, uh, we use Earth Engine apps to bring together dashboards of information uh, from a variety of sources that help us plan uh, how we're going to go about keeping Google Maps up to date around the world. Uh, in the outside world, we've seen uh, Earth Engine apps applied to everything from monitoring the spread of COVID-19 globally to uh, studying uh, changes affecting uh, tidal zones, uh, you name it. Uh, today, you'll get a hands-on session where you will learn how you can create your first Earth Engine app uh, packaging up any of your own Earth Engine scripts. 
So hopefully that gives you a flavor for the different Google mapping tools, uh, what they might be able to do for you in addressing your own uh, social or environmental projects, uh, and to help you be a positive force for change in your own corner of the world. Uh, buckle up, this is gonna be an action-packed day. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm.